Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, November the 24th of 2022. Our prayer resources this evening come from the worship resource from the Iona community, Candles and Conifers. From all eternity, bright and beautiful, Alpha and Omega, integrity and holiness, truth and vulnerability, majesty and mystery, God is God. God was in the beginning, bringing wonder and light. God is in the present, bringing truth and love. God will be in the future, bringing hope and truth. Let us pray. In his days justice shall flourish and peace till the moon fails. Mercy and faithfulness shall meet and embrace, and the glory of God shall be revealed in beauty, in awe, and in wonder. The king will establish his kingdom, and the hand of the king, mighty and strong, in the battle with evil, shall be the hand of the healer, opening the eyes of those who are sleeping, raising people to their feet, and rejoicing in their well-being. And the Spirit of God shall be with him, and upon his people, and they shall know that God has made his home with them, and he shall be their king and their God, and they shall be his people, blessed beyond measure, made radiant in his light, and at peace in body, mind, and spirit, a people made whole by the return of their king. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 6 and 9 to 13. I do not want you to be ignorant, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not be, let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. And from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 26. You then, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through many witnesses, and trust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the, please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before the Lord that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, 
a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Avoid profane chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Haminus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying resurrection has already occurred. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands bearing this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness. In a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for special use, some for ordinary. All who cleanse themselves of the things I have mentioned will become special utensils, dedicated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for every good work. Shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with stupid and senseless controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, and that they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading this evening comes from the devotional book, The Power of His Presence by Ray Steadman. Fit to be used. 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 26 includes this verse at verse 22. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Those with pure hearts are not sinless saints. They are not holier than thou's who have never done anything wrong. They are not the kind of people who look down their noses at everyone else who gets into trouble. No, the word pure would be better translated cleansed, past tense. Those with a cleansed heart, those who have already known what it is to be where you are. They do not put you down. They encourage you. They say, I know how you feel. I've been there too, but God picked me up. I know what it means to lay hold of his great forgiving love. So one of the necessities of being used of God is that you keep company with those who are aiming in the same direction. I had an occasion to spend a day at a penitentiary. I had not been there before. It was a most remarkable experience to see Christian friends working in the prison as salt within a corrupt society. It was a rainy day, and no one was out in the yard. Everyone was in the halls, so it was like going into a high school that had just been let out for lunch. Among the inmates that of that overcrowded prison, a Christian group is maintaining a testimony that is keeping that prison away from violence, acting as salt to preserve it in the midst of a very explosive situation. In the chapel, I sat next to a man who had been a murderer, a murderer several times. He had been one of the toughest, fiercest convicts in the prison system. He had stabbed several people while he was in prison, and he was a member of the gang that tried to rule the prison, a vicious loner who would not hesitate to take a human life. Yet God had reached him. Now he is the most gentle-spirited, gracious fellow, a teacher of the other prisoners, instructing them in the truth of God. I met with others who had been murderers and child abusers, men whose lives were changed, who were now listening and listening to and rejoicing in the scriptures. I asked the leader of the group what it was that most disappointed him in his work. Without hesitating, he said, it is those who are so dramatically changed here, but who lose all they have gained when they get out. I asked why that happened. Because they go back to the same old crowd, he said. We are not made to live alone. We are made to live with others. We need the support of others. Those who surround themselves with a non-Christian view of life and non-Christian friends are almost certain to go back at last into that way of thinking and living. So if we want to be used of God, the apostle urges us to seek the companionship of those of like mind.
Let us pray. God of new creation, when we are sleeping, exhausted by activity and the demands upon us, wake us with a burst of light to lead us with joy into your day. God of the unexpected, when we are sleeping, dulled by apathy and indifferent to the needs around us, wake us with a burst of light to lead us with joy into your day. God of judgment, when we are sleeping, hiding from the truth and shutting out the pain of reality, wake us with a burst of light to lead us with joy into your day. God of all life, wake us up. Recreate us, surprise us, challenge us, that we may be ready to greet your light and walk with joy through the day. Amen. Today and tomorrow, in time and eternity, God's kingdom come. In our world, in our streets, in our homes and communities, God's kingdom come. In our lives, in our loves, in our hopes and our traveling, God's kingdom come. Amen. Good night.